Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is a product review video, and I haven't done one of these in a while because for, there just hasn't been that many stuff that's come in that I haven't seen before. And you would think I would have saw this one, but I haven't. So what head is this? This is a big block Chevy head, but this is an AFR 345, and it's the version two. This is their version one and version two. Are, there's not really a huge difference in them, but um, this is the version two, the more updated one. And I've never had this come through the shop. It's I've flowed a bunch of their AFR 305s. There are 315s I've flowed. I've flowed the uh, 385 once, um, 325 several times, but never this one. This one's in to get ported. So if it looks like that doesn't look new, how could you judge it? Well, it's been ran, but I did blast it. So I put it in my blaster. I don't hit it with hard media. Uh, just enough to get the carbon off so I'm not breathing that when I'm grinding. But blasted them, and same with the valves, and float it. This isn't going to be a dramatic difference from what it would have been if it was brand new. So it's pretty close to what it was brand new. Now I can tell you this one has an option that the head is available with. This is a 121cc version chamber. So if you look at their website, they have two versions for the chamber. They have a smaller one I think is like 117 and they have this one's 121. You're like, how can you tell? See how, even with the blasting and all that, it's very, very smooth. If you were to get the smaller chamber one, you would see these gigantic CNC ridges from where the chamber was cut. You don't see it on this one. This is the finer chamber one, and this is the one that they claim flows more air. Now, if you can kind of tell here that this head is partially CNC ported. Really, that's just CNC bowl blend stuff, but that's about it. Um, nothing, nothing really major on that deal, but they CNC bowl blend. And then they've got their nice competition valve job in their CNC chamber. Let me shine a flashlight in it because you'll see here also that this is, well, it's really bright. This is their ASCAS chamber. You could tell the ASCAS markings in there. And it's just that CNC bulb. And let's look at the other one. There we go. And honest, I'm going to be honest about this as completely as I can. There's some stuff over there. Don't get too worried. Um, the port design looks better on the 305. You see the valve itself and see the vein area? Let me see if I can't port it uh, here. On the 305 and even the 325s I've seen, this is far more profiled and better, which is odd that this one isn't. Um, it's not as clean. Look at, I mean, I'm going to flashlight again. That one's not as bad, but the short runner one, that, that's not pretty at all. That looks like a dart from back in the day. Um, again, you can see some of the which don't get too worked up about this. Everybody's like, oh, if I grind this off, I'm gonna gain so much flow. You ain't gonna gain one CFM. It's weird how that works. But anyway, there's that. The valve sizes come in at 2300 on the intake, 188 on the exhaust. Exhaust. Here are the valves. AFR does a really good job of putting this big old back cut on their valves. It really helps flow. Now, this is the exhaust valve, and this might affect some of the flow. I'm fairly certain this guy got the Econel exhaust valve upgrade from AFR because this is insanely heavy. It's got a tulip, but it's also not notched too much in the center, so it weighs a bunch. It may weigh more than the intake valve, which is strange because usually that didn't happen. Um, let me go to this side. I want to show you this real quick. This has to be a newer version, and let me show you why. Like, in other words, I think it's cast within the last mm, four years, three years. This, that casting mark is stands BB, stands for Buddy Bar. Uh, Elder Brock, I'm sorry, um, AFR doesn't cast their own heads. They don't have their own foundry. If you go back in time, like really far back they did, but they haven't probably in the last two de decade, maybe 15 years, something like that. So they used to pay another company to cast their head and that other company was Elder Brock. So if you get another head like this, you'll see a little E with a circle around it. It means there's Elder Brock foundry. So they cast their heads and then um, AFR would do that CNC machine work, the valve job and all that. So in other words, they also grind, they'd also put the guide holes in and everything else. So essentially AFR, at, um, sorry, Elderbrock at that time just cast the head and AFR did every other piece of machinery to it. So from drilling the guide holes, spring pockets, everything. Now um, Elderbrock no longer is doing that for them. So they have Buddy Barr do it for them. And in all fairness, I'm gonna say this and I hope not to offend somebody, the Elderbrock castings are much, are far superior than the Buddy Bar ones. Um, both are made in America, but differences are huge. So Buddy Bar only started doing it like the last three years, I want to say. 
So I, that means this is a newer head. So even though it's that version two, you can have a version two that's got an outer block casting. And what I mean by what, what do you mean it's better? The, does the port design any different? No, the port design is exactly the same. It's the porosity and the casting is worse with these. So anyway, there's that. Here's your exhaust side. It is raised up. Um, that's how they come from the factory. I couldn't tell you exactly. You can look at IFR's website to see that. But there's that. And I float them. So I'm going to show you the flow numbers and give you honest, real stuff here. I float them on my Sains D680 bench. I actually float them on a big bore. This is a 4625 sleeve, sleeve so it's huge. Um, because I only have two bore sizes to flow these heads on, I have either a 4310 or 4625. This guy is a 572, which is like a 4.5 bore. So the closest one is that 4.625. Um, so here's what they float on the big bore. Now, don't forget, big blocks have a long runner, this one, which is the one that most people advertise. That's the one that flows the most. And they have this short runner, which is the one that flows the worst. I flow them both just to show you. All the exhaust ports are the same. So the intake flow is on the long runner, the better one's right here, and this is the short runner. If you look, and I've got to say it, up to about 400 lift, really 500 lift, this thing is an absolute beast. 300 CFM at 400 valve lift is a great number. 290 on the short runner, still a great number. Even the 240 here at the 300, 347 is great at five, and 328 is great okay on the short runner but that 400 number is outstanding the problem is after that it's just not that great um so 369 that's not horrible at 600 but look it only does that that's where it's peaking 369 369 again then it drops off it kind of comes back so it's a 360 cfm head um really you can call it 370 i say this because i floated the afr their ascast 325 and it's gone 290 uh, sorry 390s this is 10 CFM worse. Now, granted, it's so much better at the low lifts, but not nothing in the peak. So same with the short runner does worse. It's only peaking at 368. Before someone says, I don't care what it does up here. Why do you show the numbers up to one inch valve lift? It tells you how stable the port is, and you can tell it's not stable. 368, 369, and then it drops, then it comes up, then it comes up a little bit more. So the port, it tells me how stable the port is, and the port's not stable. And if you think big blocks don't run 850 lift, they do all the time. So there's that. And the exhaust flow, again, same situation. Up to about 400, outstanding. Or even 500, really. But after 500, 257, 255, 257, 252, 253. It kind of just hangs out. It should be going, this thing should have been moving like 270 at least. Really 300. And this is without an exhaust pipe. It just didn't do it. Kind of a disappointment on the exhaust side. So in other words, from... One to five, outstanding. After that, it's okay. So that one kind of shocked me. I never would have thought that the smaller 325 head would outflow a peak, um, this bigger 345, but it does. Which it, That's new to me. I haven't had that happen before. So I've flowed several 325 one like one was a fluke. They usually do 390 stuff. This is 370. Um, I'm going to be porting it fully. It's getting larger valves, 2350, uh, 50 degree seats. I'm probably going to lose some of the 400 lift flow. You know, I tell you, I'm probably going to be in the 290. I'm probably going to kill 10 CFM there. And peak's going to go to around 430, 440. So it's going to pick up, but not in the lower lift. That's really hard to do. Um, but anyway, there's your product review on the head. Guys, remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.